When I think of sci-fi tales, my mind usually falls upon some desolate, borderline lifeless planet, or an asteroid belt that stretches beyond imagination, littered with the quiet, hulking remains of abandoned vessels or space stations. A place that the masses have abandoned for one reason or another, yet holds within it a vast wealth for those willing to brave the void to break the seals on century-old airlocks and plumb the depths within for any and all valuables. With 3.18 having reached the life persistent universe, that world is one step closer for players like myself. Persistence allowing ships that have been abandoned, whether by choice or forcibly, at the hands of conflict or error, for those of a salvaging mindset to put to good use. And while salvaging itself is still very much in its infancy, the only hull scraping being the usable mechanic available at this time, it, coupled with physicalized cargo, is still a rather enjoyable game loop for those that just want to scrape what they can from the remains of failed journeys. Citizens, my name's Beard of Oz, and today I'll be talking about the Drake Interplanetary Vulture. I'll go over its specs, its place in the Star Citizen Persistent Universe, and why this ship is quickly becoming, for me, more than just its role. Before I dive in, I just wanted to say thank you. I've been getting back into streaming on Twitch and posting what I hope are helpful shorts on YouTube, and the community engagement has been amazing. So if you like this video, give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so that you'll be notified when my videos go live. If you'd like to support my content, as well as my addiction to shiny ships, I have memberships available for just $1, and I'll put a link to my Twitch channel in the description below. Okay, now let's dive in. The Drake Vulture isn't a new sight. It's been around for much longer than most newer ships are before their official flyable release, with the PTU for 3.18 having been so long, it feels like it was there forever. It was available for all that stepped into the PTU alongside the Aegis Reclaimer, so that hull scraping could get a good old thorough testing. And so it probably feels a bit odd now to see so few of them, or at least their broken remains hanging around landing zones. Not to say that there aren't any, just that there are fewer, and they aren't all just yellow now. And there's the thing. I normally talk about how much a ship costs later in the video, but I might as well mention it now because at the time of recording this, we were only a week into its official time in the Persistent Universe, so it is only available by pledging it on the RSI website with real world money, not the fake space kind in game. If the Drake Vulture and the gameplay it offers to you are of interest, you can pledge it for $165 Warbond, or $192.50, that's in USD. With that out of the way, let's get into the ship itself. Being currently one of two ships designated for salvage, the Drake Vulture is the smaller option of the two, coming in at 33 meters in length and being classed as light salvage. Out of the box, it comes equipped with two small power plants, two small coolers, two small shield generators, and a single small quantum drive. The components are more than enough for its primary role, with only the shields and quantum drive being the main things worthy of an upgrade if only for the sake of defense and cutting down on travel time. In terms of weaponry, the Vulture has barely enough to put a sting on your foes with two size 1 hardpoints, coming equipped with two gimbaled laser repeaters. No missiles for this little scrapper, but it does have the standard assortment of decoys and noise to up those chances of survival. Being an industrial vehicle, the Vulture also comes with utility attachments. This being currently the Bayless Salvage Heads, attached to the end of those Vulture Salvage Arms. Each Salvage Head comes with the Cinch and a Braid Scraper modules, more on those later. As the salvage profession increases with such features as vehicle munching, I'd expect the utility side of things to expand with more components. It's the inside of the Vulture that has really made this vehicle something I truly enjoy using. It has two entrances, the first at the cockpit, accessible via this sliding door with the option of entering the seat directly or opening it to walk in. When in atmosphere, this upper deck is accessed by the ladder on the side of the left salvage arm. This cockpit area leads back into the living area with a hygiene closet with toilet. Past that, a bunk that looks less than comfy, but will allow you to bedlog when you're in the black and exhausted after a day of salvaging. In that same space, a kitchenette of sorts, then past this sliding door, a gun rack for two rifles and three pistols, and a locker with no functionality as of yet. 
Descending the ladder leads you down into the heart of the salvaging aspect of the Vulture. Here you'll find the salvage converter that currently converts the scraped hull of ships into the commodity RMC, short for Recycled Material Composite, a valuable resource that can be sold to TDDs and scrapyards, though the scrapyard will only pay you two thirds of their standard value. This converter is also an exciting change as it's the first case of crafting in Star Citizen. While it's been stated that it's a temporary addition, this little beauty allows you to convert unprocessed RMC into multi-tools and various multi-tool attachments. This process uses a fairly large amount of this material to do so, so it's more of a convenience for a player that has forgotten their multi-tool more so than a way to make money. The multi-tool is a necessary component to the salvage life, as to move the 1 SCU containers of RMC to the grid, or anywhere else for that matter, requires the use of a handheld tractor beam. Speaking of cargo grids, the Vulture has a cargo grid allowance of 12 SCU. Though as many players have discovered, you can technically fill the hold with closer to 20 of those 1 SCU crates, though those untethered via the grid are prone to movement the jittering of which can sometimes cause spontaneous ship destruction, so consider yourself warned. The second entrance to the Vulture is in this cargo area, with a rather drake ramp that extends out to allow access to the rear of the ship. While you can technically fit some ground vehicles in this space, the low ceiling will be a limiting factor to which vehicles. Back to the cockpit, the Vulture has a very industrial setup appropriate given that's exactly what it's for. With four MFDs total, two of which being in view without head movement, the major part of the gameplay HUD being holographic when in scraping mode. Sadly, the headlights on the Vulture are an absolute disgrace, illuminating the arms of the ship more than the ships you spend hours scraping. The two scraper heads I mentioned previously, the cinch and a braid being the narrow and wider beamed options, with the cinch having a narrow area of effect with a higher transfer rate, and the abrade a wider beam with a slightly slower transfer rate, though at the moment the abrade seemingly the most efficient of the two. Once two SCU of RMC has been collected, the scraping process will be halted while you move the crate in the dispensary square to the grid or cargo hold in general, then press the eject button to move the second crate also, heading back up the ladder to repeat the process. Of late, I've started using the Vulture for more than just salvage runs. It has space for storage, a cargo hold to transfer bodies to loot, armor and the like. You can collect 1 SCU cargo crates from abandoned or destroyed vessels, as well as scrape the hulls of ships that have run afoul of enemies, the terrain, game crashes and even the violent retribution of murderous bunkers. Finally, even if a bunker is surrounded by the remains of several ships and you know you shouldn't go down there, the trip hasn't been a total waste. Flying with friends on bounty hunts or beacons adds another source of income from the engagements, and the subtle art of breaking into ships has become something of a fun minigame for me. All in all, I find the Drake Vulture to be a fantastic little vehicle for those that prefer the industrial life, though it is a shame that it's held behind a paywall for at least a few months, if not longer. And there you have it, the Drake Vulture, the gritty little moneymaker for those that prefer the industrial life. What about you? Did you ever play around with it during the PTU or do you own one yourself? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you letting me know by hitting that like button. And if you aren't already subscribed, consider doing so now and hit the bell icon to be notified when my videos go live. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I also stream on Twitch, I'll leave the link to that in the description below, and memberships for the YouTube are available with badges and emotes, all for the low low price point of $1. A shout out to Darker Shadow NZ for becoming a member as well. As always citizens, stay safe in the verse, and I'll catch you all next time.